In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to paint rocks underwater. You see this look in shallow water in rivers and at the edge of lakes. Many times we get wrapped up in trying to create this look when really it's much simpler than it looks. One of the key things to notice here is that the water appears to get warmer as it gets closer to the viewer. Warmer means redder, more yellow, and more green. So in the distance the water is blue and as it moves towards you it starts turning green because it's warming up and then as it moves closer it starts turning red and yellow which means it's getting warmer and warmer as it gets closer to you. Of course the water's not getting warmer. What's happening is that the rocks underneath the water which are made of earth are more red and they're showing through the clear water. The sun is shining on them making the water appear more red as it gets closer to you. So what I'm going to do in this video is take a combination of this photograph and this photograph and merge the two. I'm going to alter this photograph quite a bit and then I'll make the water appear to have rocks underneath the surface. So to really understand this you need to see it in relation to the surrounding bushes, trees, rocks, and distance which will make the water appear more convincing. So I'm going to have to paint an entire painting but what I'll do is paint everything except the water first I'll run the first part of the video in high speed and then I'll slow it down when I'm painting the water. Now I mentioned that I'm going to alter this painting quite a bit and here's why. This is a typical setting that you see out in the woods when you're in plein air. You'll almost never find a perfect landscape. You'll almost always have to alter it in some way. Like this painting here has way too many rocks in the water to accomplish what I want the viewer to see. I'd like to have a sky in this painting and I would also like to have some mountains in the distance. So I'm going to alter the composition of this painting a bit. I'm going to cut this middle ground right here. I'll include these rocks and I'm going to put some distant mountains. And then I'll put a sky with clouds. I'll also put some ponderosa pines over here on the right to stop your eye from sliding off of the canvas on the right side. These trees here will act as a barrier to help frame the painting and also stop your eye. So you'll see how this actually improves the composition of this painting. Now I'm also going to cut out this water and paint my version of water with rocks under the water. Then I'll put a small little island of rocks here in the middle and it will appear as if you're standing on these rocks looking at this river that's running past you. So I'll begin by roughing in this composition that I've been talking about. Here's the pine trees on the left. Here's the river. Here's the pine trees on the right. And then of course in the background on the right you're seeing the distant mountains and the sky. I usually start with my darkest color which is called a dark accent. Now I've got this on super high speed. If you want to skip through this, there's about six and a half minutes of this super high speed video. You can either watch it and see how the painting develops or you can skip to the next video, which is what this tutorial is about, painting the water with rocks in it. But I have to develop this other part of the painting so you can see the relationship between the river and the rocks and the additional part of the landscape, which is of course important.
I'll develop everything in this painting except the water. These are the rocks and the shoreline. The shoreline is mostly rocks, so these are rocks on the shoreline. So you can see how much more open this painting is with this new composition. I've got the mountains in the background on the right, the sky, clouds. It opens this painting up much more. This is my first shot at this painting, so I can see some problems that are developing. This is part of being an artist. When you create your own composition and your own painting like I've done here from a composite of several photographs, you have to analyze the painting when you're finished to see what worked and what didn't work. I can see right now there's some repetition going on in those rocks in the background. Those areas that I have divided up are equal in size and that's one of the most common problems artists run into is repetition. The way the rocks are divided up in the background there they have equal parts and that's repetition and that's one of the things you want to avoid. It's only human nature to want to balance things. As human beings we want things to be equal on the left with things on the right and so we just naturally divide things in half. We naturally break things into two equal parts. So Repetition is one of the things you have to continually watch out for when you're developing a composition. You'll notice in the foreground here where I split the river that one side is bigger than the other. In other words, I didn't split the river exactly in half. The other problem that I'm seeing is my bushes on the left and my bushes on the right are exactly the same size. That's repetition and that's a problem. So when I come back and adjust this painting, I'll make the bushes on the left probably bigger than the bushes on the right, so it's not repetitive or a repeated image. So, of course, I'm developing everything except the water. Just about ready to move on to the next video. Okay, so that'll wrap this one up, and we'll start working on the water in part two of this video.